hello hello welcome back to my channel if you have been keeping up with watching my videos for a while then you would have known that i've had quite an adventure in trying to obtain a new monitor which is the samsung m8 back in 2023 now that it's been about six months or I think almost seven since I've been using it. I'm here to share my honest opinions and review of this monitor, how I use it for work, for creativity, for productivity, or for just general chilling out and if it's still worth getting in 2023. So get cozy, grab your favorite drink, and let's get started. So to give you a bit of context, I was on the hunt for a monitor that had a high quality display, had versatile usability, and was overall aesthetic and fit really well with my desk setup. After a bunch of research and comparisons, I finally ended up with the Samsung M8 monitor and it's been my trusty desk companion ever since. In terms of its aesthetic, I just really love the look of it. I feel like it looks like Apple's Pro display, I forgot the name. Of it insert it right here but i feel like it looks like that but it looks better and i also really love the color options that it has i know that there's like a sky blue one a pistachio green sort of color and a pink one but i ultimately decided for the white one also really love how big the screen is it is a 32 inch display i guess like in terms of my desk setup in itself it is a little bit too big but i really do enjoy having a big screen. Now it came with a few cables such as a USB-C, HDMI and charging cable for connectivity and for charging and a remote which is pretty handy. Now when it comes to work, the Samsung M8 monitor is a productivity workhouse. Because of its 4K high resolution and 32 inch vibrant display, it's really nice to just work on it because of its big canvas and there's just so much space to view my documents and write lines and lines of code on VS Code. Now I use an M2 MacBook Air for work which connects really well with Samsung's provider the USB-C cable which simultaneously extends its display and charges my laptop. This means having fewer cables cluttering up my workspace and providing a cleaner and efficient setup overall. Now let's shift gears and talk about personal content creation. As a creator, having a monitor that's color accurate is pretty essential. I think that the default settings that the M8 starts off with is great but it could be better. So after some playing around, I tweaked the settings to somehow match the colors of my MacBook as close as possible, creating a seamless transition between the screens. This setup has been a game changer for me for video editing because of the expanded screen space, allowing me to see more of my editing timeline, which overall helps with my productivity. But there is a catch for older MacBook users such as myself. For instance, my 2017 MacBook Pro cannot use the provided USB-C setup for display and for charging. So instead, I have to use a USB-C hub such as this one from Satechi and use the M8 HDMI cable to extend the display and use a separate cable to charge my laptop. This does mean having slightly more cables to manage but that's the best that I can do with my current laptop right now. Now of course life isn't just about work and content creation. We all need a little downtime and balance. Now because Samsung M8 also acts as a smart TV, I can always catch up on watching YouTube videos, enjoy some Disney Plus, or indulge on a Netflix binge. The M8's visual makes every experience cinematic with just a few remote clicks. This is also incredibly helpful for me as I don't really enjoy watching videos on my laptop because as I mentioned before, it's quite slow and old. And yes, the Samsung M8 also has gaming potential too, especially if you have a Nintendo Switch or other gaming consoles. But however, I don't have any gaming consoles on me at the moment, so I haven't really used this feature as much. Now, as amazing as the M8 is, it's not without its drawbacks. The M8 does have a 60Hz display, which means that it might not be the best monitor for hardcore gamers seeking for ultra smooth motion. Compatibility can also be a bit of a puzzle. Some advanced features might play nice only with specific hardware and software configurations. If you're using an older MacBook like I do, the USB-C setup might not be the best and the response time can also be a sticking point for some people. 
people. Plus, if you are someone who's particular about vibrant and precise colors, it's worth noting that the monitor's color might not meet your creative standards. As I mentioned before, I had to customize my settings until it somehow matched the colors of my MacBook. Oh, and I almost forgot about the webcam. It is a 1080p webcam, but I don't find myself using it as often as its video quality is noticeably less saturated compared to my MacBook webcam. And not to mention, it is placed oddly high, which means that you just see an awkwardly large amount of negative space in my background, which is not that great. And then there's also the price tag. The monitor isn't exactly budget friendly, so definitely weigh the pros and cons before you take that plunge. But wait, there is more. Let's talk about some of the unexpected gems that I have discovered while using the Samsung M8. For instance, there is this clever volume system that adjusts the audio levels based on your surroundings, which I think is pretty nifty. And if you're not too keen on fiddling with the settings, fear not, the monitor does come with preset video settings that can save you the time. Oh, and did you also know that you can connect wirelessly via the DisplayPort? You can connect any of your Samsung, Android, or Mac devices using this feature. And I also find it pretty useful if I wanted to cast any videos or photos that's on my iPhone or iPad using Apple's Air Display. And lastly, those blue light filters are a real game changer if you're having those work marathon sessions. All right, so there you have it. That is my comprehensive take on the Samsung M8 monitor. It has been a journey of highs and lows, but overall it's been an invaluable addition to my desk setup. I honestly really do love it. Remember, this monitor might not be everyone's cup of tea, especially given its price. So if you are considering on buying this, really do take the time to evaluate all the pros and cons before you buy it. So thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions or want to share your experience, Experience using this monitor, do share them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Until next time, stay creative and stay positive, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.